Greetings everyone and welcome to episode 41 of Nariyama's Let's Play Minecraft version 1.12 featuring Direwolf 20's mod pack. So, uh, last episode we got the portal to Alfheim up and it's working well. Um, in between episodes I uh, added a bit of uh, Endoflame production, so a bit, I doubled it. Um, and I also changed the uh, regular mana spreaders to Elven mana spreaders. Um, they are still getting maxed out, which um, is not ideal. So once we get some Gaia Spears, we'll probably uh, upgrade these to Gaia Mana Spreaders. But um, regardless, so uh, the other thing, you, mean you can see the, the mana pool is slowly filling up again. I did get us another Terra Steel Ingot. And today is going to be all about getting the uh, Gaia Guardian uh um, encounter going. So this is going to be sort of the first of the the end game content, if you want to think of it that way. Um, so we're kind of right at that uh, um, right at the transition point between the mid game and the end game. Something I did want to point out, though, for all this stuff, um, none of this was terribly difficult to make as far as resources go. Um, so we did need a fair amount of lapis. But other than that, most of what we've been using here has been, uh, you know, basic resources. You know, some iron, some diamonds, some ender pearls. Those, you know, we've, we've used a fair amount of those. So, you know, you'd want to have a, a mob farm going before you started this up. But really, everything we've done so far could be done pretty early game. Um, you know, nothing terribly advanced. I mean, basically, the most advanced thing I've been using is the exchanging gadget to make... Uh, Getting the living wood and living rock production, you know, a little a little easier. Um, otherwise, this has been pretty basic stuff. Um, and you know, I, I wanted to point that out so that you know you realize like uh, we did not have to start this this late. Um, we could have started this a lot earlier. And actually, the items that we've gotten, the the sojourner sash and the pyroclast pendant, are really sort of nice quality of life items early in the game. So. You know, instead of waiting until until now, we could have certainly gotten those a little earlier. Um, the monk mod kind of uh, makes those two items sort of obsolete. Now, like I said, um, both of them can be upgraded, uh, which we're going to look into doing here probably this episode. So we'll see if they're still obsolete after, uh, after we're done today. So the first thing we're going to do, or need to do, is make a beacon. Um... So let's look into that. Beacon just requires a nether star, so there we go. Now if we look at the Lexica Botania on the Gaia encounter, let's uh, go back here, what was it? Elfheim, there we go. Ritual of Gaia. So we need these Gaia pylons, which we'll make here in a second. And here's the, the structure we're going to do. Now, we need to be kind of in a wide open area. Um, I'm going to say right about there. Oops. Right about there. No. Right click any block to anchor this. Okay. whatever reason. There we go. Um, so it needs an open grassy area around it that's pretty big. Um, I think this is big enough, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, so I am going to put it up one block because I think this won't work. I think these have to be raised up one block, but that's okay. We'll, we'll give it a shot and see what happens. Um, so we need nine blocks of iron. Uh, let's see here. Block of iron. How about just iron? There we go. Block of iron. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's actually clear that. Well, let's not clear it out because knowing where those are is going to help. All right. And it's going to tell me this is the wrong block in the center there. But then the beacon goes on top. Excellent. And then these Gaia pylons go out here. 
here. So let's make those. I have all the ingredients for them, I think. So let's see. Yep. One, two, three, four of those. Let's go over here. So this is saying put it right there, but we want one higher than that. So now it's nice about this particular thing is that it does not require uh, any mana for the ritual itself. Now we are going to want a fair amount of mana for this and I'll explain why. Um, Part of this ritual, so what's going to happen is it's going to spawn a boss. And then about halfway through the fight, it's going to spawn a ton of extra um, things. And uh, let's go get a emerald just for the heck of it. I think the ritual turns the, em turns the pyramid off, so it doesn't really matter, but uh, we'll grab it anyway. There we go. We'll go with speed. Speed and regeneration. Yep. So we should be getting the speed buff. Awesome. And that does stack with Monk. So we move super fast. All right. Uh, hold on just a second. All right. So we've got the the thing laid out here, right? Um. If we right-click on that with a Terra Steel Egot, it's going to spawn the encounter. But before we do that, we're going to want to make a couple of mana pools and some other items here. The things we're going to make are Belthorn and Medumone. Medumone basically roots anything that comes within its area of effect. Belthorn damages anything that's not a player that comes within its area of effect. So we're going to have these two flowers sort of overlapping each other. And we're going to stick them all around this, this spot. And the reason for that is when the Guy Guardian spawns as adds, basically those two flowers are just going to root them and kill them for us. We won't have to worry about them. Um, and it also prevents us from getting sort of mobbed by all these extra things, which he's going to spawn a lot of them. Um, and, you know, we get lots of extra loot too. Yay. Um, so let's look into how to make those. Uh, for the Belthorn, we're going to need three red petals, two cyan petals, and a redstone root. Now this is an interesting thing. I just need grass and redstone to make a redstone root. So let's grab our shears here and run over here to this grass. Grab a bunch of this. We're going to need a bunch of this because um, we want, I think, either four or eight of these flowers. Um, I don't remember what my previous setup used, but we'll start with four, and if four doesn't seem to be killing things fast enough, we'll make eight. Um, this is another way to make a mob farm, by the way. Um, Belthorns will kill mobs that get spawned, you know, for whatever reason, so we could basically, instead of having the, the, uh, um, industrial foregoing mob grinder, we could just use the Belthorns. Um, now, they do require mana, so they don't take a ton of mana, but they do require a little bit to work. Um, so let's go ahead and throw our, uh, what you call it in there? And we need some uh, cyan, ing or cyan flowers, huh? That's light blue. Do we have cyan? I certainly hope we do hate to have to go find some or make some. Light blue. Pink. Now hold on just a second. I'm going to see if I can find some cyan flowers and I will be right back. All right, we're back. Uh, I couldn't find any cyan flowers really quickly, so I am instead making some floral fertilizer. And we will go ahead and use this to try and grab some cyan flowers. Um, if you recall, we used this a, a little ways back. Um, basically, what it does is it spawns 
botanium flowers. So we just need to click a few of these. That I think that's light blue. No. Blue. No sign. Oh, is that? There we go. Okay, we got one. So we can get all the rest of these. Of course, if I had my Horn of the Wild on me, this would make this a lot easier, but that's okay. And thank you to Monk Mod for making my digging ridiculously fast. <laughs> all right. So we'll stick that back in there. We'll grab those, that one, that one, that one. Don't need any of this stuff. All we need is the cyan one, which is right there. Awesome. And, of course, some bone meal and some shears. Excellent. All right. Let's plant those. Bone meal it up. Shears, turn those into those. One, five, six, seven, eight. All right. And that should be plenty of cyan petals. So if we looked at that recipe again, Three red petals, two cyan petals, and a redstone root. Let's make this happen. Where'd that grass go? There it is. Redstone. Perfect. Let's do 16 of these for now. Can always get more. Um... I need those red petals too. Where those red petals go? There they are. So we're gonna make four of these to start. So twelve red, eight cyan, and whoops, four redstone root. Got my uh, seeds on me. And redstone root, perfect. All right, so I just need my seeds, my bucket, and an empty hand. Seeds, bucket, bucket, empty hand. Seeds, bucket, oops, empty hand, seeds. All right, and there's four. Awesome, okay. So unfortunately, we don't have any uh, baddies to to look at, but I do want to plant this to show what its effective area is. So that's actually a little too close. We want like there. Uh, almost about there. There we go. Now we're just going to overlap a single row and column. So. It looks like two outside, yeah. So if I come over here, there's my, what you call it, two outside is that one. And yep, perfect. All right, same thing, one, two. And just line up the columns here, there. Oh, that was off. That one, yeah, right there. Perfect, okay, so you can see, um, and actually if we turn on our wand of the forest, it'll show us, okay, it doesn't have a uh, mana pool to draw from, but it can draw from a pretty big area, so that's okay. Next, we need the metamones. So we'll say that's good. Actually, I probably shouldn't have done that. Let me pull that back up, just in case we need more. Uh, that way I have the recipe handy. Okay, Metamon takes one, two brown, two gray, a rune of earth, and a redstone root. Now, this will consume the rune of earth, so we're going to need to make a few of those. 
How many of those do we have right now? We have six runes of earth. Well, that's enough. Four of them should be plenty. This is one that we should only need four of because um, it'll root everything regardless of you know how many there are that are within its area of effect. So we don't have to worry about uh, not... We don't need to worry about quantity as much, basically. All right. Let's get four of these. Oops, wrong one. Now, I could probably do this without this preparation pretty easily with the, the stuff that we've got already. But it doesn't hurt to do it. And, you know, it's, it's always just sort of the, hey, you know, you've got these resources available. Why not use them, right? And this is really sort of what these flowers were meant to be used for. They're, they are there to help with rituals like this or thing, you know, the things that, that would otherwise be a little difficult. Um, so let's see. I think... Yeah, it still needs redstone root, root of earth, two gray, two brown. Okay, we're fine. So let's get rid of all this. And whoops, didn't mean to do that. Uh, gray, brown, rune of earth, redstone root. There we go. Now we can take these out of our inventory, stick the bucket back in there, and make four of these really quickly. Um. So, what it's saying is that I can basically repeat the recipe just by clicking with an empty hand there, which is really, uh, you know, kind of convenient because I don't want to necessarily have to go through my inventory and constantly be throwing stuff in there if I can avoid it. So, let's drop this down. I think this one goes a little bit on the inside. No, it, it can basically do the same uh, width. So, what we'll do is we'll just stick it like here. Will that cover everything? No, it'll miss the, the middle. And believe it or not, we do want to hit everything. So that, however, will hit everything. There we go. Uh, wrong one. There we go. And so if we look at the pattern there, it's all going to overlap over the, the center one there. So that's perfect. Okay, so now what we need is we need four mana pools. Now these do not have to be full, and you know something that that we could do is set up a, a quick uh, sort of spark network to to um, get mana over there, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I will probably set that up in the future though. Uh, let's grab some living rock. Ooh, we need more living rock. So, there we go. And it's going to take a minute for that to come up. In that minute, let's go ahead and make two of these at least. Uh, where'd that go? Oh, hey. <laughs> Oops. One, two. So we stick this over here. And I think these overlap enough that I could probably put this, like, here. Let's see. Do you now have mana? Doesn't look like it. Um, can I bind you to there? Yeah, okay. That'll work. All right. So now you guys have mana. And there. Awesome. And let's go fill this up. Oops. Give me that back. There we go. We'll fill up that mana tablet. We'll make an, or we'll go put the other uh, mana pool over here. 
and let's go ahead and bind these. I think if the mana pool is close enough, it'll bind automatically, or if I had put the mana pool down first, it would have bond bound automatically, but that's okay. All right. So here we go. We've got mana. Whoops. We got mana in the mana pools. We got a nice big area around it. Um, it'll tell me, by the way, if the area is not big enough. So, for example, if I have to excavate this part a little bit, it'll let me know. Um, there'll be like a little like graphic that shows up around it. Um, similarly, if this like if I need to put more dirt over here or something. Anyway, all right. Let's grab our mana tablet and let's kick this off. So let's go put a bunch of this stuff back that we don't need, um, mostly because um, I'm going to want enough inventory room so that uh, I can pick up all the the loot that's going to drop. Um, let's grab our thing here. Let's put away... That goes there. We can put all of this away. Probably going to want that mana tablet with some mana in it. Just saying. Let's fill up our stuff here. Now, um, the Guy Guardian does uh, wither things, but because of Monk, we should be more or less immune to that. So let's see. Here we go. Nope. Okay, so you see that, that uh, circle? That's the arena here. How much damage we're doing with our tanks? How much damage we're doing with our tanks? Other stuff. So the, the purple on the ground will wither you in the amount of purple. Oh wow. That is just doing mounds of damage. Okay, so now we're going to stand off to the side here. Ow. I didn't realize I was that, that hurt. And that's the uh, Belthorns and Metamones going to work for us. And give us a second or two and he will... online here. Notice his life bar is sort of like shining. There we go. Awesome. Ooh. Still getting hit by stuff. Alright. And here's all the loots. Um, nice thing is Belthorns actually do uh, sort of uh, give you the, the player dropped loot of stuff. So, kind of nice. All right, so we killed the Gaia Guardian, and we got eight Gaia Spirits. Now, what can we do with these? So, we can make a cloak, which is really nice. Um, basically, the three cloaks do some really nice stuff for us, um, and we're going to want to make one of those before we do the, the upgraded version of that fight. Um... Where did I put my Lexico Botania? There it is. Let's go to the index. Cloak. Okay, so there's the Cloak of Judgment, or the Cloaks of Judgment. That That's what they're called. Uh, cloak of Virtue will, when active, block the full extent of a piece of damage taken. Will, whoops. Ah. Cloaks of Judgment. There we go. Cloak of Sin will damage all nearby hostile mobs for the same amount of damage that was taken. And the Cloak of Balance will evenly split the damage between the attacker and the target. It also prevents the target from dying. Okay, so... I think the one we want is the Cloak of Balance. Cloak of Virtue is good, but it, like... Whoops... Cloak 
Cloaks of Judgment. Uh, okay. Set of cloaks that can be worn in the body slot. Their strength triggers when their wearer takes damage. After that, they're going to a 10 second recharge period in which their the effects won't trigger. So, that, um, I mean, maybe Cloak of Sin? That might not be a bad idea. I think I usually go for the for the Cloak of Balance because this does some damage, but it also uh, protects some of the damage. So, all right. So let's do that really quick. Um, we need a black wool for that. So let's get some wool. There's 64 wool. Let's get some ink. We need a five, I think. Uh, uh, let's get six. What the heck? Oh, it was balance I wanted, not... Uh, Son of a gun. Light gray wool and emeralds. Okay. So. Oops. This plus bone meal. Really? Hmm. All right. So I think we need bone meal twice plus the ink will make our light gray dye. Uh, ink. So that makes gray and I think that makes light gray. Yes, yes. Okay. So let's make that gray. There we go. And where's our wool? Wool. There we go. I need some emeralds. And we should be good to go. Uh, and the guy's spirit. Yay, cloak of balance. Awesome. Okay, so again, this has to go in the right spot, but luckily that spot was open for us, and now we look even cooler. Uh, what is it? F no. F5? Yeah, F5. There we go. The Cloak of Balance. Woot. All right. Okay, so we got the cloak. Um, what else can we make with this? We are going to want to make the Gaia... Uh, ingot, so uh, I think we might have to wait a little bit for that. How are you guys doing? Not too bad. Alright. Um, the other thing we can do is make the Gaia Matter Spreaders, if I remember correctly. So, use not what I was trying to get. Use. Alright. Yeah. So a Gaia Spirit, an Elven Mana Spreader, and a Dragonstone makes a Gaia Mana Spreader. So, let's get a couple of Dragonstones. Or do we already have a couple? We do! Hey! We need four of these for the upgraded ingot. So let's go ahead and... Uh, let's just get rid of all the charcoal out of here. And that should let that eventually burn out. So... Um, I'll be right back, but uh, then we'll get going on the upgraded Gaia uh, encounter. All right, folks, we're back. Uh, the uh, End of Flames have burned out their their stores of uh, charcoal, and we got everything going here. So I've got two Elven Mana Spreaders. I've got my Gaia Spirits. I've got my dragon stones. Let's make these into Gaia mana spreaders. Very cool. Okay. 
So we're just going to set those there. We're going to bind there and bind there. And then we're going to put some mana lenses on this. And there we go. And now all we have to do is drop the stuff down. Keep forgetting about that one spot. For some reason, this spot just doesn't like to have uh, stuff planted right next to it. As soon as I plant anything next to it, it, it breaks. I'm not sure why, but I'm not sure we'll ever know why. Okay. So put these down. And we'll stick the charcoal back in here. And there we go. So, the last thing I wanted to point out is, you know, I got a bunch of stuff in loot. I actually went and put most of it away. But I did get this epic shader grab bag from Immersive Engineering. I have no idea what this thing does. Um, I've never gotten a satisfactory answer on what this thing does. So, um, if anybody knows, I'd love to know. Um, I, I'd be very curious to know what this does. So... Um, the last thing we're going to make with the Gaia Spirits, before we go ahead and, and get this going, is we're going to make the Crimson Pendant. So we need another brick, some blaze rods, and we'll get that going. Another brick. Blaze rods. Three, four, five. God, I love having thousands of blaze rods in there. <laughs> um, so we could be using blaze cubes instead of charcoal for this. Um, that might be something we do in the future, but uh, right now, it, for right now, it's good. Let's grab our pyroclast pendant and voila! Crimson pendant. Now this thing is so cool. We can go and basically bathe in lava. Uh, let me demonstrate. Do 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 do. I'm in lava now. I am not taking any damage because the crimson pendant is awesome and basically makes lava like water for me, which we are going to use because one of the things that I promised was you know that causeway that we built on our base is going to look a little nicer and we're going to use the crimson pendant to be able to go swimming in the lava and build on the bottom of that causeway. So yeah, um, I will show that probably next episode, not this episode, but. Uh, We'll see. Okay, so the last thing we need is another terra steel pendant. Should do we have enough uh, stuff now? Ooh, pretty close. I did want to check this out. So yeah, the Gaia mana spreader is definitely able to handle all of the uh, endoflame input and uh, not waste any of it. So that's that's good stuff. All right. Um, one other way we can sort of see that is that it's not continuously firing. Right? There's a pause. Um, and that means that it's not oversaturated. All right. So you're just about ready. That's probably good enough. Let's go ahead and get a diamond, a pearl, and a mana steel ingot. I'm going to put the rest of this stuff away because we don't need it. Uh, we are going to need that uh, those guide spirits, though. Here we go. go. Like I said, with more uh, mana pools here, we could have a uh, more power or a faster transmute. Um, and one of the ways we could do that is by having the the mana spreaders go to a pool that has a dispersive or no, sorry. Uh, um, not dispersive. It's a recessive uh, spark on top of it and then have a bunch of pools that have just normal sparks and the recessive spark will fill all the normal spark pools and then all the normal spark pools would fill would uh, supply this spark here so that that is one way we could do this anyway let's try the bigger batter Gaia fight now this might kill us um, this guy does a ton of damage um, you know, it's recommended that you have full Terra Steel armor before you do this. And while I don't think Terra Steel armor is necessarily better than the Monk uh, mod, because it looks like the Monk mod gives me full armor, um, 
it might protect against damage in other ways that the monk mod doesn't. So we'll see. Here we go. The ice beard two. Okay, we gotta watch our. Oh, he was hurting himself by hitting me while I had my sword on. That's awesome. Um, so again, oh, the other thing I did uh, while I was sort of uh, in the cut there was place another Belthorn, so hopefully these will die faster. The really nice thing about uh, the Monk mod for this particular fight is that I don't get withered, um, which is a good deal. I'm going through my, my super sexy corned beef breakfasts breakfasts here pretty quickly. Alright, come on, Gar Guardian of Gaia. Here he comes. And there he goes. Awesome. Alright, so this fight, last fight we got that uh, shader grab bag and the, gar and the Gaia thing, or the uh, Gaia spirits, and that's it. Um, this fight, we definitely got more than that. Where is... There he is. Yeah. Alright. So, things that you get from the upgraded Gaia thing. We got some Mana Steel. So you should get some um, resources and some runes. Interestingly enough, we got runes of Sloth, which are kind of hard to make, so that's cool. We got a bunch of Gaia Spirits. Yay. We got this thing that says Will of Arim. Craft with a tear steel helmet to add the following effect. Critical hits apply a strong weakness effect. There's a total of six of these, and you can put all six of them on a single tear steel helmet, which makes the tear steel helmet really, really OP in my opinion. Um, maybe not quite as bad as Draconic, but it's still pretty bad. Um, Relic Shader Grab Bag, whatever that does. And then there's this thing called the Dice of Fate. This is really why we are uh, killing the, the Guardian, right? The Dice of Fate gives you a very, very awesome item. One of six of them. Um, they all have different effects. Some of them aren't quite as good as others, but they're all pretty good. So let's see what we get. Uh, of course, we get the fruit. So the fruit is really good, right? It's basically it, it will it you can eat it any time and it will fill up your uh, um, satiation to that point. So it's kind of better than the corned beef breakfast in that regard. Um, what it doesn't do is it doesn't give you the the strength and resistance buff that the corned beef breakfast gives you. So um, let's do this again, shall we? Um, I don't think we have enough mana. No, we don't. Okay. Well, I think that's a good wrapping up point for the episode. Um, so the the upgraded Guardian of Gaia, we are going to kill him a couple more times to get the other um, relics. And in particular, I'm looking for a ring. Um, the There's a ring that you can get that gives you basically another full health bar. Um, I think it's the Ring of Odin. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really what I'm looking for. Um, there's another item that you can get from here that makes killing the Ender Dragon much easier. Um, and that's another one that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna want to get. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed seeing the, uh, the boss fight for Botania here. Um, you know, the, the sword that I have deals damage to things when they damage me and the Cloak of Sin does this, or the Cloak of Balance does the same thing. That's why the... Even without me hitting him, the the uh, Gaia Guardian took so much damage. Um, I still took a lot of damage that fight, so I got to be a little careful. But uh, we should be able to hopefully kill him a few more times, get some really really awesome items, and uh, 
move on to some other uh, uh, some other mods here pretty quickly. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.